good evening and welcome to tonight's episode of Realities A Moment with Susie. I hope everybody's had a lovely week and you're going to have a lovely weekend as well. On today's show, we are going to be discussing the truths and the myths of child sexual abuse. It is a very, very sensitive topic and it's a topic I've been wanting to do for quite a while, but I was looking for the right person to join me. And I would like to say a big thanks to Tokes, a local. Tokes, thank you so much for joining me. And, you know, it's really good to have you because I feel that this is a topic that you have to have a professional, someone who is working within that field that has a clear understanding. And you're working in that field at the moment. I worked in that field. And I've done that drastic 22,000 word essay on um, child sexual abuse and it can be quite, quite gruesome and it can be, it's shocking isn't it and unbelievable. Yes. What we are going to do, what I'm going to do at Totes, because um, like you know we have all these discussions on Facebook and we kind of look at what we are going to talk about. Now I'm thinking we have an hour for the show. And, but there's so much, when it comes to child sexual abuse, there's so much information to give out, isn't there? So I thought, you know what, we're going to bypass the why. Now, the reason why we're going to bypass the why of why people abuse, because I think that is more of a, psycholog a psychiatrist's job. I think one of the reasons we do know as of why people abuse, sometimes it's because they've been a victim of abuse themselves. And then you've got the other side whereby you're now delving into the perpetrator's mind. And also, I don't think it's helpful because once the deed is done and when you know that information, it still doesn't really help in a way because I, as a parent or as a carer, I can't stop someone from abusing my child if I don't know that they have the tendencies to do it. So what I'll start, I'll start off with defining um, child sexual abuse and then after I've done that we can go in and you can um, talk about the signs, the symptoms and then we can also go into the ways of which we can protect children. I think also when we're talking who will abuse, who will abuse, I think that is very, very important that people know abuse because I think a lot of information gets lost there. Yeah. So, first of all, I'm going to start off with defining child sexual abuse. So, child sexual abuse is happens in touching and non-touching activities. So, examples of touching are when an abuser, and remember, an, an abuser could be a child or an adult. It could be another child or it could be an adult. It's when they touch, um, like, the genitals and the private parts of another child. It's, um, you know, and that includes all their private parts. And there's also the non-touching side of it. And the non-touching side of it is, for example, showing a child porno pornography, um, exposing yourself, be you an adult or another child, to that child with a sexual intent. Also, showing photographs of your genitals to a child and tr encouraging them to watch you showing them those photographs, as well as inappropriately watching a child while they're undressing or maybe they're having a bath. Do you think that covers? That, that yeah, I mean, also, I, I suppose I could also add rubbing into that as well. That's rubbing your private part. That would against, fall under the touching, touching, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you shouldn't be touching in any way whatsoever. No, that's right, yeah. that's right. You know, and I guess the, the, the dangers are, I'm, I'm going to go into the, the signs is now is like... it's Before those... we go into the signs, could we go into who abuses a child? <laughs> Usually, it's a person who, in another word, lacks confidence. And I use the word lacks confidence in the sense that because, you know, you're trying to take advantage of someone's situation because you've either you've groomed them or you, or you use something as a means, whether because you have a position of power. It could be a teacher, 
a head of year or a head of school, somebody who has power over you, yeah, who could then use that power to influence you or in a way groom. Yeah, and apart from that, also, when it comes to um, child ex um, sexual abuse, I think it's very important that people, as in parents, carers, or anyone who is attached to the child, realises that when it comes to child sexual abuse, 90% of cases of child sexual abuse have been with someone who is close to the family. Now, when I say close to the family, I'm talking about a parent, I'm talking about an aunt, an uncle, cousins, yeah. other relatives, close family members. Yeah. And then you move on to, like you just said, teachers. That's right. It could be someone, someone in the church, someone in a youth club that they go to, someone who is a friend of that child. Yeah. And you have, to, and I think it's very important that parents realise this. And according to research, as I said, if ninety percent of child abuse cases have been done by friends of the family, that means yeah. only ten percent is actually done by strangers. strangers. That's right. I mean, what you have to understand is that most people that tend to, it has to be someone that is known to them that usually is the case. You, know, you spoke about, you know, a father. I'll give you an example of um, two siblings. You know, one was 17, the youngest one, the girl was six. And through the process of about three years, you know, the parents actually knew about it as well and they didn't know what to do because it was the siblings because the implication would then be one person would then have to be removed from the home. But the point is that the fact is, yes, usually they are known to the person. And they are why, the reason why they are known is because that's an opportunity of grooming. You know, it's an opportunity whereby you, know, you, you build a relationship, a relationship around secrecy, around trust. Yeah, and you just hit the key word there, that relationship around secrecy. And we're adults, the reason why strangers don't usually abuse is because they haven't got the child's confidence. That's right. And do you know what I find? I find that um, the sad thing is that people feel shame if they have been sexually abused in the past and sometimes they don't recognise it and because of that they don't talk about it. You understand? Now I know that I, as a child, I experienced something similar but the last thing, like I had a cousin yeah. who was trying to make advances to me. He was much older, I was much younger. And I found that with me, I think going into social work as a profession helped me feel comfortable around talking about it. Yeah. Because I think you get to the stage where you feel no shame about That's, it. Yeah. And then I could look back and I could see that, wow, even one of my dad's friends once said to me, oh, Susie, come, let me give you a kiss. That is a form of sexual That's abuse. Yeah. But I couldn't tell my dad about this. I couldn't turn around and say to my father, oh, your friend just, uh, your friend just did that. Yeah. So, and I think, you know, everybody has to be so, so mindful. I think, I think as adults and people in, in place of responsibility, it's that thing of, imagine, you know, you're trying to tell someone about, somebody trying to make advances or playing with you. It's like, they're gonna feel whether it's in your mind like it's you know, your fantasy or whether you're trying to be cautious about you know what you know what kind of thoughts to actually go through your mind. Does that make sense? I mean yeah. imagine a child saying to another, Oh, somebody is being suggestive to me or is playing with me. You know, the, it's like how do you know as a child that act? What do you know about that act? Does that make yeah. sense? So the whole secrecy around that or the old it's fantasy. Also, there's also this thing about trust. Yeah. So it's like I've got a friend Oh, no, when you think about it, I'll give you another example. Like, I had um, one of the cases that I dealt with, and obviously I cannot use names. So one of the cases I dealt with was a young boy who was 15 years old. Yeah. Now, he was 15 years old, and the mother discovered that he had been abusing the two younger sisters who were five and seven. Now, the only reason why she found out about it was because one of the little kids turned around to the mother while she was in the bathroom and said, oh, my brother touched me there. 
And the mother was like, what do you mean by your brother touched you there? What do you understand about your brother touching you there? And so the mother kind of, she um, now explored it. But you know the interesting fact about this situation was that the mother never told anybody about it because of the shame that it would create to the family. So what the mother now done was she just, I think she spoke to the boy about it. And after she spoke to the boy about it, she said to him, I don't know who to believe. And I remember this one so, so clearly. I don't know who to believe, but can it stop? But what happened was the girl went to school and the girl was behaving in a manner that led to them having to address this child about her behaviour. And it came up in a play session that she was having with a special needs teacher. And it was when she told the teacher and the teacher now um, spoke to her. Of course, they have to call the mother in being the carer yeah. of the child. So they called the mother in and the mother broke down in tears yeah. and confessed that um, she had been told about this and she didn't know what to do with it, so she just spoke to them. But while we're talking about that, let me say welcome to Simi. Thank you. Simi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Simi, Simi got stuck in traffic. It's one of those things. It's one of those things. But also, um, I'd like to say that Simi is also working within that field. And so the three of us here, hopefully with the knowledge we have, we can give up that knowledge to people out there because I think it's an unthinkable act that people don't want to think about but it's something that you do have to think about because it happens yeah. um, what I haven't said is that guys this is the live show if you feel the need to ring in if you've experienced something similar or you suspect that something like that could be going on and you want to ask any of the um, guests here a question please feel free the number is going to be scrolled across the screen also, being that this is a very sensitive topic, sometimes people don't want to do things like ringing and stuff like that. So I've got a helpline number that is going to be displayed on the screen. Remember, the number for the show is an 020 number. The helpline number is an 0808 number, which is a free number. So if you watch the show and you feel that um, you need to um, talk to someone and you don't feel comfortable ringing in to ask any questions, that number is there for you to please ring. There are professionals at the end of the line who know how to deal with this type of situation. Simi, sorry. That's fine. What we've, um, what we've basically done is we've looked at um, the definition of sexual abuse, okay. what it is about, who will abuse, as in who are the people that abuse kids. We've looked at the fact that 90% of abusers are actually known to the child, are close people yes, to the child, which can yes. father, mother, brother, sister, anyone Definitely. that is close to the child yeah. school teacher church anybody don't ever underestimate it so if your child says it to you don't brush it under the carpet and say can you stop telling lies or what type of fantasy is going through your head yeah so now to say the fantasy yeah. thing in that you know children don't have that information that is they don't have that information can i just say i'm gonna sorry disagree with you a little bit most children do not have that information, but you could have one or two, because I have come across cases whereby the child got the information from another That's friend I mean. it's and she decided to now reenact really it to, yeah. and yeah. say that it was happening to her. And by the time they delved into it, it turned out that it was actually happening to her friend. But by this time, the father had been arrested. But yeah. then one has to question, if a child is actually saying that a parent or somebody close to them, etc., is sexually abusing them, one then has to look at what relationship that child had with that person anyway. Oh, yeah, in order oh, yeah. To I, think it's, I think that. it's very important to do that. But I think it's also very important to know that sometimes getting the information... You know, you have kids playing mummy and daddies. Definitely. And then a child says to another child, let me do this to you. And uh, what do you mean by let me do that to you? And it's like, well, my daddy does it to me. That's, that's, that is, that, yeah. That is kids for you because yeah. kids do explore. And also you have to be careful about the level of television you're exposing your kids to. You know, some kids are mm. up after the watershed. I've been in people's houses and their kids are watching TV at 10, 11, 12 at night. Television is okay. And it's, the, it's the mobile phone. At that time, the mobile phone, I, they got it in their beds I, I, while wait, they're wait, sleeping. I do agree 
that, you know, all those things are exposure and stuff like that. But if a young person then says, you know, uncle, whatever did this to me, or, you know, Johnny did that to me, etc. It's still about the level of information that child has as to whether or not one can tell, whether or not that the child has experienced That's that. Right. You have yeah. to be able to give, you know, when, when a child presents, decides to disclose. Oh no, when a child presents, you have to take it serious. Take it serious. Yeah. But remember, with the child I'm talking about, they went down the line of investigation. So the father Which was arrested. The child, yeah, automatically the father was arrested. Um, the father, the mother, everybody in the household was interviewed. The child was interviewed and it was in the investigation during the investigation stage that they now discovered that this child had, and they had to go into that family, and it actually led to a prosecution in the end. Okay. It was but actually, then, and but other kids in the house have been saying, when, a child, when a child discloses, right, obviously you take it seriously. seriously. You, you have, have to, to all the time. Right. You have but to. if a child is not being truthful about that, disclosure but there's a reason why yeah, they're they're not really yes, and, and so therefore to... one would still have to question what is it oh we did we did and know what we felt we discovered we felt that the information what we worked out from it in the end was that the information that this girl had given to her friend was so distressing she needed to get it out so it actually yes yeah, yeah, like, it actually like, distressed yeah. her to that level yeah. that because it was, they were spending quite a lot of time together. They were best friends. So when they're in the playground, the girl was sharing, sharing this information with, with her. So in, in, in another way, she was actually the one actually doing the display. Yeah, so she could have, she could have, but for some reason she done that. And I'll tell you, the girl is older now. About seven years down the line, I had contact with her. Mm. And she said to me, Susie, do you know what? It was hard that time for me, and I, f I really felt bad about what my family went through, but I'm glad I'd done it because she was helped. That's the that's, yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah. I think the other thing that when you were going through the, the kind of people who may or may not abuse, and you yeah. talked about a mum and stuff like that, I think people then kind of like take a shudder backwards when they think about it's females reality. abusing, yeah. sexually yeah. abusing yeah. children, yeah. because it's like the female person can't do that the female person doesn't have it in them they to do, do that mm. but they do yeah. you know and then the other thing is like within our culture that's the other thing that's the hardest that's, part that's the hardest. because when a child discloses it's like no 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 no, that can't happen you're talking nonsense well i was you just know? before you came in i was just saying to tokes that disclosing sexual abuse is one of the hardest things for definitely. kids definitely and i said to him that doing studying social work opened a lot up for me and I could revisit my past and I experienced it but not on a high mm -hmm. level you know I had a cousin who was attempting to touch me I think I was only about 10 years old you know I feel comfortable talking about it mm -hmm. because I dealt with it yeah. and you know but to tell you the honest truth I say I felt comfortable with it but that happened and I remember he used to come to the house you know, hello auntie, hello uncle, he will be, you know, kneeling down, <laughs> greeting my parents, he was a good boy. But it was like, when I'd go and, when it was time to take him out, because for some reason we had to take people to the front door. So then I used to go to the front door, if I used to open the door, he used to try and put his arm and touch me. And so I used to be behind the door, but I never ever came out and said to my parents, oh, this is what yeah. happened. I was scared to disclose that to them. And... Later on, years later, maybe about 20 years later, I didn't have contact with him because he actually went to prison when he was 19. And years later, I had um, contact with him. And I remember my cousin, his sister was in my house and he rang her and she said to me, oh, Susie, so, so on the phone, my body just went cold. Yeah. Even as I'm talking That's about right, it now, yeah. I just yeah. felt a shiver yeah. go through me. And I think a lot of adults that have experienced it they still carry it with them. Yes. Yeah. You know, they've been through that abuse. They were never able to discuss it, boys and girls. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I can remember my dad's aunt, best friend coming in one day. My dad went into the room and he was like, Susie, come and give me a kiss. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I and do. then yeah. I think I was about 14 or 15. You know, we have to recognize it is very important that people recognize that adults do look at kids as sexual objects yes thank you. and i think it's very important that people realize that kids get abused from the age of naught yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes they do yes they do and i know age. i know other kids yes. like yeah. that yeah. 
you know, yeah. where a baby was sexually yeah. abused. And, that and was damaged but forever. also, what I think is also important as well is people understand who will abuse because people get misled. A woman does not want to believe that her husband would abuse their That's child. Right. A husband does not want to believe that his wife would abuse their child yeah. or her older brother, her cousin. Yeah. And it was like, I was just chatting to Turks when we were in the car and I said to him, I had one case and I'll never forget the case. The girl was an only child to the family and the mother died. She was seven when the mother died. And um, of course she was left with the father. There was no reason not to leave her with the father. And when she hit 13, she started acting out and that's how she came in contact with the care system. Now we were working towards settling what was going on in the house so that she wasn't taken into care. care but because she was displaying disruptive behavior, it was like, oh, this child is naughty. Father's not coping with her. Let's intervene, but let's not put her in care because yeah. she comes from a very loving home. Father loves her to bits. Father is thinkingly rich. Middle class. Father, sure. high class. Exactly. He was, a top, was he was a top officer. When we now got into the middle of the case, what had actually happened was that when this girl's mother died, when the girl was seven, the girl was a carbon copy of the mother. When the girl hit nine, she was sharing her bed with the father. Transfers. And the father, that's it, transferred all his feelings for the mother onto the daughter. And so from the, from the age of nine till when she was 13. But, but I would then question that because yes, it might be transference, right? But at the end of the day, a person who doesn't find a child sexually attractive wouldn't find that child sexually attractive. So because there wasn't any evidence, there wasn't any evidence that he had abused somebody else. The yes. only evidence, don't forget, the girl looks so much like the mother. But that's he didn't given, have that's any given him a reason out for me. But whether we like it or not, there's going to be a reason. It's, Nothing is not done. That's, that's yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. But it, it feels just, it's like no, justification. No, it's not, it's not no, it shouldn't it's, be justification. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, uh, it, transferred, was, uh, it wasn't justification. Yeah, it was a way of, this is what the report came back from the psychiatrist. This is what came back after, because yeah. a lot of work was done, because he was a top officer. Sorry, we have a call coming in. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello? Sorry? Sorry, I think, I think you're going to need to ring back, because I think there's something wrong with the line. Yeah, there is, actually. Okay. Yes. Um. I, I guess at this stage, I just want to just mention it's like um. I, I want to give an example, and, and the reason why I want to give this example is because sometimes you know we, we think about the wise, and a scenario whereby, you know, for example, and this really it's really a, more like a warning as well. Yeah. It's because, for example, we're, we're parents. Yeah. We're parents. You know, we allow our children to try to explore. And by exploring, they might decide they want to go and spend a weekend, whether it's with the pastor, children, or with your own siblings, yeah. you know, nieces and nephews. And I guess the point of this is that, you know, you mentioned that, no, you know, you don't know who an abuser is. They don't write it on anybody's head. That's right. That's you know, it not could not be true. anybody. Yeah. But a scenario whereby the minister of a church, for example, now discovers his child is then abusing. I sorry, talk, sorry. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, hi. Hello. Hi, sorry. Is there anyone that... Hello, yeah, hi. Good evening. Good evening. Bummy, yeah, I can hear you, Bummy.
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Bumi, we will go through that. We will, yeah. we will, we will go on to that for you now. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bumi. Thank Bye. you. You see, I think one of the most important things with parents and kids is communication. Yeah. Open Definitely. communication. Yeah. That is very important. You encourage your kids to be comfortable to talk to you about anything, be it something sexual. And whatever they say to you, take it very serious. Yeah. Don't brush That's it right. under carpet. Yeah. Yeah. Investigate it. Yeah. I think it's very interesting, uh, very important as parents, you realize that if you, your kids will always get to a stage they can explore. If they find the time to explore on each other, your kids will explore on each other. It is so, never ever believe that it's not possible. A lot of parents want to say, no, not my child, forget it. I always say to people, forget it. Don't say not my child, you're not in that child's head. To me, it's very important that when you have boys and girls, separate them as soon yeah. as possible. Because that's what they call natural curiosity. It's that's natural right. curiosity, yeah. it's natural yeah. exactly. Yeah. And you have to understand that kids will abuse yeah. kids. All the abusers are not just adults. That's right. Yeah. Kids yeah. will yeah. abuse yeah. other kids. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I've, had, I've had a case where um, a 10-year-old brother was abusing his 3-year-old brother. Yeah. Um, and that young person was also being sexually abused by a paedophile ring. Yeah. And so therefore, he felt it was natural in yeah. relation to abusing his brother. Yeah. His brother, his younger brother, the three-year-old, decided to disclose in the middle of Tesco's, which oh, yes. kind of like blew over yeah, the grandma, because yeah. she, she stopped dead and said, what? You know, um, and the young person repeated it again. You know, yeah. this is what happened to me. This is what my brother did. You know, and there, obviously there was a lo load of investigation and we did end up in the High Court in relation to all that, yeah. in relation to the paedophile ring that their older that child was yeah. involved in. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, Grandma took it on board. She could have stopped and said, no, 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 etc., cetera, et cetera. But what that disclosure did is that it actually saved his brother and a number of other children other kids, yeah. who were being abused by that group of mm. men. You know, so um, I think the other thing is that, you know, um, children who who are children of people who work in the caring professions like social workers, yeah. probation, etc., etc., those children always feel that like their parents are overly cautious. cautious. Well, you end yeah. up... Hold on, we've got another call coming. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hmm? Hello? Okay. Um, okay, yeah, go on. Yeah, no, I was just, you know, talking about that. My, my children say to me, Dad, why don't, I, why don't you allow me to go for sleepovers? Exactly. I say this, I trust me. I don't nobody. trust anybody I don't else. trust my best friend. I'm I, sorry. I, can't. You can't. You can't. I said, I, like I said to you before, Never my dad's, right. my father's best friend, bless their soul. Yeah. They're both dead now. Okay, do you know what? I'm going to blow it up a bit. I feel comfortable doing this. This is why I am doing it. My own uncle wanted to actually try it with me and he was a uncle as in blood relative but you know what i could never ever tell my parents this still today i have never i think i told my mother but this was years after he was dead that he had attempted to you know and it was like oh you know i remember how it started we were staying in his house come off it you're staying in a relative's house you understand? We were staying in my relative's house and my uncle just came up, exposed himself to me and said to me, it's time for you to learn sexual education. And I was like, <laughs> but the reality of it is that I feel very, you know, people, some people say I'm paranoid, but I think that when we work in our profession, yeah, we do. you know that there is no one, yeah. you know, it could be, uh, it could be a president. It could be, it could be, it could be yeah. anyone. It's about people's feelings and how they control them. Because it's not to say there aren't other people out there that see a child and feel sexually attractive to them, but they control it's them. It's about crossing the line, isn't it? Exactly. And it's about not being able to cross that line. That's back, it. Once you've crossed that line. That is it. Hi, sorry, we've got another call. Hello, good evening. Hi, who am I speaking to, please? 
Hello, Bedu. How are you? Bedu, ha Bedu, what would you like to ask or say? Could you talk up a bit, please? Hello? I'm fine, yeah. You can say what you want to say to us, Bedu. Yes. Child sexual abuse. Yes. Huh? Bedu, you know what? Bring us back later. Bring us back later. I never said that you would do that. Bedu, you're going to bring us back later. Bedu, you're going to bring us back later. Yeah? Bedu's gone. Right, sorry. Bedu, I think, sorry, I think Bedu thought that it was just child abuse. He didn't realise that it was child sexual abuse. And, I, and we weren't focusing it on him. Yeah? But no, no, like you were saying, yeah. Maybe lost in false. No, no, basically it's about, you know, as as a professional person who works in this industry, yeah. that's what you're saying, that you don't you kind that's of right. you don't trust no, talking about the pastor. Right. But yeah. the but the thing about it is that you you also have to consider the fact that your children have to have the same kind of life but can I that say other children. No, no, but wait, can I say something? Can I say something though? You also, as a parent, need to consider that there could be a possibility that your child would abuse another child. That is That's right. Because, and I think it's really important. No, nobody wants their child to be an abuser, but you can't control it. I did so have that if, with yeah, somebody recently. So if another child, and I've seen it happen, whereby a young lady turned around and said, your son told her mum that this boy was abused, it was in the childminders, that the lady's son was abusing her and touching her and the mother said it is a lie not my son and i looked at the woman and i said to her do not say that because you don't know what has happened behind yeah. closed yeah. doors I think, I think that's important around education well i mean I give an example is telling your children this there's consequences and the seriousness of the consequences yeah. yes. sometimes you know as parents or as adults we try to shy away we from... We try to the, shield our kids yeah. and say our kids that's are innocent 24-7. Right. Right, you know, but I'm, a parent that says, no, not my child, then you're, you're actually more or less... Encouraging that child. You're condoning that, that behaviour and you're actually grooming. Yeah. Yes. You're grooming a paedophile. Yes. Yeah. Or, or you are right. allowing a paedophile to grow. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So you're seeking, nurturing it. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of seeking health, help for that child and saying, okay, they've said this. Let's make sure you get the help that you need now. Let's get you off to whichever professional is appropriate. Yeah. They're going to shove it under the carpet. It becomes society's problem. Yes. It's that denial thing, isn't it? It's like, that denial, it's that denial it's thing. thing yeah. And me. the thing is, what I find out also is that with um, my experience as a Nigerian, is that a lot of Nigerians, if they hear about it, it becomes, oh my God, the devil has come into the house. It's not about the issue itself, the act that needs to be addressed. Mm. It's now the child is cursed. Somebody has put a curse on the child's yeah. head. Or the child has met up with a bad gang because they don't want to believe that their child would perform that act. Hello, everybody, wake up. Any child could do it. Don't ever believe that just because you are bringing your child up in a Christian way, in a Muslim way, in a perfect way, that it's not possible for their mind to now stray the other direction. I think the other thing that, well, sorry to cut you, the other thing that we need to consider is that adults that have been abused, that are still carrying it, they do need to still seek help because right. it impacts yeah. on their parents. That's right. Yes, it and also on their way of life and exactly. their relationship. Making. Well, you know, I think I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of an example of that because I could never ever um, I could never ever discuss it with my parents because if I think if I had, I would have got a beating for being a bad child because I was already a troublesome child, and I think when you have a child who is troublesome. Sometimes you feel that they everything they're doing is an act they're acting mm -hmm. up and it's not true. true yeah. And I think we're running out of time and I think we need to look at we're gonna have to go and look at the um we're gonna have to dig deeper into the signs because okay. Okay. I think it's very important because one of the signs is that kids acting out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's that right. is with Yes, but act, you know why I say acting out? Because I can say that most of the kids that came to our attention were acting out and they didn't come to the attention of social services because 
they disclosed that they were abused. They came to the attention of social services because they were acting out. Because of their behaviour. Because of their behaviour. And when they dig deeper, they now discovered mm. that this is why they are acting out. I think the signs and symptoms, one of the signs and symptoms definitely is a change in behaviour. And I think yeah. if a parent then starts seeing that Especially my child has now started acting in a certain way. That they weren't act acting before. They weren't before. acting before. Yep. You and need to sit down and talk to that child. And instead of still saying the child is a bad child, beating the child, send the child off to live with grandma, etc, yeah. etc. Et it's like, hold on a minute. What's going on for you? And if you can't tell me, will you tell somebody else? Will you encourage your child will to you talk to somebody else? Give the child yeah. different opportunities yeah. and different yeah. ways yeah. of actually communicating. Verbal communication is not the only way well, forward. Yeah. And I think people don't think about they that. They don't think. But also, you know, another thing with that, with teenagers, they usually start, act, teenagers that have been abused, they usually start acting out when the hormones kick in. Yeah, they do a lot of them start getting flashbacks and mm -hmm. that's when you see so if you see your child all of a sudden they hit puberty mm -hmm. and their behavior goes the other way be very careful check, check it out yeah. and also I, go on that's that's a very key point but also in that and sorry to cut you is promiscuity as well because promiscuity what, is definitely one definitely yeah, yeah. It carries, it's, it's if you see your child all of a sudden so, becoming sexually so, active that's right you know and you know, next thing you know, they're sleeping with anyone and everyone that comes yeah. along. Sometimes they, they've misconstrued sex for love. That's right. And, but that's what, they're yeah. told by, that's what they're told by their abuser. I love you. Yep. You're my special person. You're, you're the best person in the world. Yeah, you know, right. this is the way that's I show that's love. That's right. Everybody experiences. Because that's the other thing. That when children suddenly go to secondary school that have been abused at home and they've been abused for a long period of time, then they go to secondary school and they realise that Everybody else's dad don't do that. Yeah, that's that's right. when they start. That's then they start that, questioning yeah. right. their whole life is yeah. 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 totally yeah. turned on yeah. its head. And you know, there's another thing. Parents, please do not encourage your kids to sit on uncle's lap. <laughs> do not <laughs> encourage. No. That is a no. big, big no. mistake. Yeah. And I think parents need to realise because you don't know what is going through yeah. uncle's yeah. mind. Mm. You don't know where uncle takes that to. If you see your child flinching when they see other adults or suddenly they don't feel comfortable going somewhere, yeah. don't check force it, them it. to yeah. go. Why? Find out why, why? they don't yeah. want to go. All of a sudden, yeah. you're going uncle's house today. Mm -mm. <laughs> don't say, let me smack you or no, you are going. Get your stuff and I am dragging you there. Stop and find out why yeah. they are saying no. When your kids, especially also, another sign is if you have a child who has stopped bedwetting yeah. and suddenly they start that bed is, wet, that is wetting right. again, yeah, that's right. that sometimes, yeah. not all the time, that is, but, but it, is a very, yeah. it is a very yeah. high sign. Also, if you have fire a child, setting. fire setting, lighting fire fire fires fire all fire of a sudden. In boys, generally. In boys, so yeah. Self-harming, self -harming major. Self -harming. That is yeah. absolute. And OD. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then also, um, there's the one of finger sucking. If they weren't sucking their finger before, they go back to a childlike oh, behaviour. Yeah. Be concerned. But about the other, major the other part is not everything. Not caring for oneself. That's right. Actually, neglecting. Yes. You know, yes. neglecting yes. oneself. Yes. Because yes. If, you, if a young person starts to neglect themselves, it means that they're trying to put off the perpetrator. That's right. Yes. That's and right. if they yeah. put off the perpetrator, then and the more that they put off the perpetrator, the more they would. The less that the, I had, right. we and uh, we had one. Girl, one like we had now. one girl. And she would not bath for I've got two, like three now. weeks. I've got yeah, like that now. two or three weeks. She would, uh, she'll literally stand beside you. She's coming, and, and it, you know. And the know. thing is, what she didn't realize, the parents actually took her to a church. I'll never forget. They took her to a church to pray for her. God bless. I'll tell you what. This girl finished law in Cambridge now. But when we went through that stage, she was going to shop. She was stealing. Mm -hmm. She was still. She will come back with the shop. We used to have to literally check her bag when she walked into the residential unit because she will go into shops, you open it, she won't take, you know, four or five head, hair clips. She'll take hundreds. She took the whole stand once. I opened her bag and I met the whole stand of the hair clips. She never, ever bathed. I remember there was one day, because, you know, as a social worker, you kind of have to pamper the kids. Mm. But she was Nigerian like me. And I remember there was one day I got, I just got so angry. I went to her room, I shut the door. I was like, right, I've had enough. I have had enough. You know what? People are pussyfooting around you, but no, 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 no. Today we are not leaving here. You're going into that bathroom. 
she agreed to go because we had a good relationship. I have to say that it's very important that you have a relationship with the person you're mm-hmm. talking to. Definitely. I stood outside the bath. I had to get a black bag and get all the clothes in her room and get someone to. She was not washing anything, and that is a sign that she that had been sexually abused. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I think it's very important because it is warding off the perpetrator. Yeah. Yes. If I think this yeah. badly, then no. they're not going to come near me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think. Sorry, Susan. I think at this point as well, it's quite important to mention what we have seen in criminal justice is the high influx of you know young and i would say young african abusers men, abusers coming yeah. through the system mm-hmm. and they're coming through the system more now because people talk about it's okay or not well, reporting Africa, it they that's don't right. report it and it is okay that's because right. there's so, child brides that's and right yeah. so they're not coming over here thinking they could do the same to a child yeah. and they're now being discovered and you know they're ending up on the register and once they're on the register they're there for life. Yeah, right. they're there for they life. go for a job, it yeah. will always come yeah. up. So it affects their CRB, it affects everything. everything. Yeah, that that's is right. it. That's yeah. Right. And and people do need to think about that. Yeah. And I think it's we've got another call coming in. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. That is one that of the is hardest, hardest. That ones. That is the hardest. And that is, yeah. yeah. What I, I give an example. What sometimes they do use is they use dolls. They will present them with dolls and see how they interact with the dolls. Mm-hmm. The yeah. dolls are a good way of what they do, you know, with dolls. No, but the problem there is how do you identify it in, in the first, first place? place? It's I it's guess a, it is it's a hard. I think it's really hard because the change in behaviour is would be good uh, down a big to their sign, yeah. mm-hmm. But it's, it is a change in behaviour, and it is that whatever communication um, tactics that you use for that child. Um, is the way that you would communicate with that child in order to find out why the behaviour has changed. And as I said, it's not always verbal communication. It could be drawing, it can be it can be like um, painting, it can be making dolls, exactly, and dolls and stuff like that. And it could be like describing good touching, bad touching as well. Sorry? Sorry, say that again. Well, can yeah. I wait? Well, can I just say, if a child of a very low age, a child basically, one with sexual needs, becomes very sexual, it needs to be investigated because you can't not say anything. Because for them to display that behaviour, that means that they have been exposed yeah. to some to someone or something yeah. that is displaying yeah. that behaviour. So it ha- even though they haven't said anything. It needs to be investigated, and that is where the psychiatrist comes in. So it won't be the teacher that will be dealing with it. It would have to be referred for a specialist to deal with it. All right, then. Thank you. I think, I mean, the key there is that the fact that as adults, regardless, that we educate. We educate children, you know, about... Self awareness and understanding their bodies, you know, That's what I'm saying them about good touching, bad, bad touching, touch, yeah. you know, make... even with a child who is non verbal, who cannot communicate yes, in that way, right. you still have to teach about good touching, bad yes. touching, yeah. mm-hmm. and yeah. about self preservation yeah. and self respect. Yeah. And also, I think parents need to work hard, they need to work hard at getting over their insecurities or their anxieties about such things. You need to learn to give your kids privacy. If you've got boys and girls in the house, separate them. Hi, sorry, we have a call. Hi, good evening. Hi, it's Mimi again. Just, uh, just a quick, quick addition to what you were saying about um, alcohol. I just wanted to um, highlight that it's not just guys that abuse girls. There are ladies and women out there who yeah. actually abuse um, children as well. Yeah. So just Yeah. 
Oh, thank Ashley. you. Gourmet, thank you so Thanks much for me. that. Yeah. Do you know what? Telling, but wait, do you know? No, she was talking about Female. not, um, Female. not females not do it. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. But do you know what? And I think this is one conversation that myself and Tokes had on Facebook because I actually done my um, final essay in social work on child sexual abuse. Mm. And when I done the research then, unfortunately, it's not good, but men do get spoken to about. Because at the time I done my research, 92% of abusers I were male. Issues, and yeah. that's where... Yeah. But when now I've spoken to Tokes, who is in that field at the moment, yeah. Tokes has told me that out of every 1,000 yeah. abusers, 17 yeah. are females. Yeah. So and it is and what we do need to recognise also that yes, men are usually identified as the abusers, but like you said, Tokes, the women that are identified as abusers are either professionals yeah. within a stage of whereby they're working with kids That's in one way or the other, yeah. or are attached to a paedophile mm -hmm. ring. And an example of that is that lady that got um Court about two years ago yeah. that worked in a nursery yeah. Yeah. and she was yeah. taking yeah. sexual yeah. Yeah. pictures yeah. and giving it to a paedophile yeah. 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 so yes I do We and the sad thing is that women don't get caught so easily let's be realistic and also the reason why with the register yeah. is that if you don't if your sentence is not more than one year you don't end up on the register you have to have gone into custody for over a year to send to sin. Before you were... But can I say, Sorry. I had a case whereby I had a young person who was being sexually abused. And when it came up, I was sitting down, drinking tea, having fun with the mother. And it turned out, the mother, we were talking about how we could get this girl to behave herself. And it turned out that the girl was initially sexually abused by the grandfather at the age of seven. The father started abusing her because you have to realize that, especially within families, is, where you have incest, it's, it's usually cool. closed. Cool. So it stays within that family, and they're usually families that distance themselves from other people. Okay. And so this girl was abused by the grandfather at the age of seven, was abused by the father at the age of nine. Then the 15 year old brother started ab abusing her. Then the mother, who I was actually talking to at the time, was filming the abuse. There you have male and females abusing. I think one of the questions people would ask is how comes a young person can be abused over and over and over again by somebody? The because problem, they don't have the confidence to yeah, come out Yeah, the problem is that once a, young, once a child has been abused, they, they do get actually used act to differently. It. Yeah. Not the, just Some of them get used to it. Some of them... they do act differently. Imagine. It comes under personality disorder. It does. It does. They, they, Imagine they if you're five years old. And they are old. extremely yeah. vulnerable. That's why you exactly. think it's okay. You, you think, think it's, it's okay. And that's why yeah. a lot of them start acting Act, out yeah. when they get older because then they realise, like Tugs was just saying, they get to secondary school and all of a sudden... They realise this is not... They start exploring mm. more. And one thing that also... Parents need to be very mindful of what their kids are watching on the internet. Yeah. The explosion of the internet has exposed kids to sexual yeah. stuff. Yeah. To yeah. Porn, pornographic. That's pornographic. Right. That's right. That's a, lot, a lot of parents would be surprised to know how many videos their children have on their phones mm -hmm. and it's related to porn. Yeah, you know, you go onto YouTube, some of these things, or they go, they go onto Google and look for stuff. They get pop-ups. They get yeah, sent. A kid they might do. open yeah. it. Yeah. You give your child a tablet. You give them a mobile yeah. phone. Yeah. Two o'clock in the morning, your child yeah. might be on in bed yeah. on that phone. I remember my child. I discovered she was on BB with a friend at two in the morning, three in the morning. Well, I, can't I was fa like yeah, that. I was I was fast asleep snoring, and it wasn't because it was because I went into the phone and checked it. <laughs> she obviously hadn't thought about deleting stuff. Because before she learned to delete it because you need to remember your kids go to school They talk to other kids and they will say watch this but make sure you delete it so your mum doesn't see it mm. You know you have to think about those things so I now my kids they have their phone after school When they are going to bed you leave your phone on the table mm. because other kids will say to them go and watch this mm. yeah. And your yeah, your child's the best child in the world, but it don't mean they're no, curious. I, I, I used to confiscate phones. Yeah. That yeah. was my thing. I used yeah. to confiscate them. Yeah. You know, in the evenings, especially because I know that they're on them. So yeah. I would confiscate yeah. them anyway. You know. And you know what I discovered yes, as well? What you need to do, if you can, do not give your child the Wi-Fi number. If you can, don't give your child the Wi-Fi number. Actually, it's a good thing to do that. Yeah, that's because what I discovered. Because you can block them because now. Yeah. Once 
they've got that Wi-Fi number, they can do it anytime they like. So you have to take it off. Is there a way you can block yes. it? Yes, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm with, um, I don't want to say the prescriber, but basically you could actually put certain words and then under the parental responsibility can to you block website. Yeah, 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 you so, can do that. And then you can actually do even that. People yeah. even come no, to but I'm house, talking about Wi-Fi. Can you, is there any way you can block the Wi-Fi? The only way you can block the Wi-Fi is yes. actually taking the Wi-Fi off. Switch it off. Yeah, switch yeah. it off. Well, yeah. yeah, but I mean with the Wi-Fi, I mean you can time it and program them as oh. well to come on certain mm. times and stuff can like you? that. Yeah, you I'm know, going to investigate I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't want to mention the it. provider, no, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but, no, but if it's for the good of it, why not? Well, if, it's, it's a good yeah. thing if a provider yeah. says, no, okay then, you can't. Okay, yeah. I, well, I'm going to check with my provider whether I can do that. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell most, you my provider. I think most providers are doing that because they're right. becoming very conscious of the yeah, pop-ups. It's that's the right. pop-ups. Yeah. That, that yeah. is the problem. And I think the danger yeah. of it all in terms of this porn is that a child sees it and will decide to go and act it out. And I think that is that the key. Is, that, that is, that is that the is, reason yeah. why, you know, you're trying to limit all these So things. your child might not be exposed to your knowledge. That's right. But your child is exposed to their knowledge. But it still goes back to the exposure. And it's, still, right. it's all expo- about right. yeah. what you expose them to, who they, who they right. are exposed to. You know, and please, you know, you have to tell, you know, you have to speak to your children as well as adults because the sex register is a real thing. It has implications and it has impact. You can't even travel out of the country. Impa- well, America's not going to accept you. If you're on, if you're on the... Are there programs that yourselves run? Um, to... They are. We, we do have, yeah, FIPS, for example. Well, they're for, are they for, for offenders or for parents? For, That's I mean, the, it's, it's, it's the balance. Yeah. You have to be an offender before you can That's get That's the problem. Help. Before you can get help, help before you, you have can to get offend. Help. That's, and that's what I find quite sad. That is sad. Actually. And that's why people don't disclose in families or try to expose the child because they don't know how to deal with but it. Who do you help? I think it's very important that parents realise that if they hear that their child is being abused, forget about it being a disgrace on the family. Hmm. And forget about, it's about the safety yeah. of your child because this could affect your child for life. Yeah, that's right. definitely. Yeah. I never think that anyone is too high up in position, no. looks too normal. No. To no. Look at the no. Jimmy Savile case. I tell you, no. that's, that's such no. a big one. And look at what has come out of it. But I would also like to say, like I said earlier on, is that anybody out there that actually has experienced sexual abuse um, or knows people that have experienced We have sexual a helpline there. They need, yeah, they need to yeah. find a helpline. Yeah. They need to get, they need to still deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't pretend that it didn't it's happen. Happening. Don't pretend yeah. that it, it's right. not affecting you yeah. because it does. Well, yeah. do you know it's what there. I discovered? I discovered that I was telling jokes that whenever I talk to um, other ladies and like I said I'm quite open about what happened to me and then they would say yeah it happened to me too mm. my cousin my uncle oh, yeah. Yeah. nobody's actually said my dad I guess no one's gonna say that are they but people have said to me actually I, I know someone who said my dad you d- and it's in my family yeah. and about apart from that please people need to realize that according to statistics yeah. Three, one in three girls yeah. are abused, yeah. Yeah. and those people are somebody. And is it one in five boys? I think and it's one in eight. No, one is it one in eight, eight, eight boys? But eight. also, a lot of young men. Before we go, a lot of young boys are abused by their older cousins, by their older sisters, by their aunties. And the thing is, with boys, is they think it's a sexual experience and a bow on their shoulder. But hello, it is not. It is abuse once the person is older than you and you are underage. Definitely. Because I've heard a lot of guys talk about it. My first sexual experience was... I know, I've heard that as well, actually, a lot. I don't don't think that sounds appropriate. No. And actually, it does cause lasting damage that they don't seem to understand. People Mm. talk about being addicted to sex. The more early you are exposed to sex, the more sometimes you become addicted to it. And it has... Great implications. Yeah, I, that that is. I think the bottom line is that children need to learn that sex is about a loving relationship yeah. of, of equals. Yeah, that's that's the main message I would give. That is somebody. that is a can and you do you that, understand? That is a very good message. Sex is, a, is about a loving relationship in relation to equals, and until you understand well, that, hold on, when you say that again, yes, it's about equals. When, but it's when about, you say that, then they might say, "Well, I'm twelve, he's twelve, we're equal, so we well, can no, do that, it." Well, no, that that more is about. One on one exploration. No, because sometimes That's about exploration. no, it's not always because don't forget if the person is bullying, even though but they're the same rape. age. That's, that's more about rape. No, but they they haven't raped the person, even if they're touching, 
non-sexual activities. Imagine if you're 12 year old and you've got some other 12 year old boy saying no, sexual stuff. No, but I think within a loving relationship. relationship. Yeah, so they but just, let's, let's, just, let's just make it clear that... Not in relation that, to yeah. somebody mm. actually trying yeah, to do that with somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that is bullying. I think yeah. We've got 25 seconds oh. left, guys. I want to say a big, massive thank you to you guys for joining me here today for this really important topic. I hope people take it on board and remember the helpline is there on the screen. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, guys. Talk to me. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Badu Magazine, Africa's number one magazine with the best entertainment in the UK. Essential information on business opportunities, latest happening in the entertainment scenes, student parties, house of worship conferences, and much more. For advert placement and business listings, we are equally your number one. Get your copy now at our website at badumagazine.com and various outlets in and around Nigeria, UK, USA, and Canada. Oh, I 